you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to answer this question on your own before listening on. We know that according to Faraday's law, the induced EMF in the loop, which we can symbolize by this Greek letter here, is going to equal the derivative of the magnetic flux with respect to time. Now, we were given the magnetic flux expression right here. So what we can do is recopy that and compute the derivative of that expression with respect to time. Now when we calculate the derivative with respect to time on the left hand side, that's simply going to be symbolic. There's really no computation, so it's going to look like this. The dt indicates that we're differentiating with respect to time. And then on this side, we're simply going to apply the power rule. So we can move this 2 down in front and multiply by 6 to give us 12. We have the variable t, and then we have to subtract 1 from the exponent. So this becomes t to the first. And then in this case, the exponent is 1. So if we pull that exponent down and multiply by 7, we get 7. We have the variable t. We subtract 1 from the exponent to give us t to the 0. And of course, t to the 0 is equal to 1. So we can actually remove that from the derivative. So this expression right here is the derivative of the magnetic flux with respect to time. We're going to substitute it into our induced EMF equation. And then at this point, all we have to do is plug in the given time, which was 2 seconds. So if we plug in 2 seconds and compute this, we're going to get 31. Now, since the magnetic flux was measured in millivolts, that means that the induced EMF is going to come out in millivolts. So this becomes the correct answer to part A. Now, for part B, we're going to have to apply what is known as Lenz's Law. And to do that, we want to go back to the question and note that the magnetic flux is increasing. We also want to note that because there are dots indicated in the drawing, that means that the magnetic flux is pointing out of the page. So we have to kind of imagine some magnetic field lines pointing out of the page. And furthermore, that the strength of that magnetic field is increasing according to what is noted in the question. Now, according to Lenz's law, if we have a magnetic flux that is increasing out of the page, that means there has to be an induced magnetic field that is pointing into the page. And we can call that induced magnetic field B induced. Now, in order to have a magnetic field induced into the page, we're going to have to have a current that's flowing in this direction here. And we'll try to prove why that is by using a right-hand rule. So what we want to do is imagine grabbing this jagged portion of the circuit, which is known as a resistor. We're going to grab it with our right hand. And we want our fingers to be pointing into the page. And that's because the fingers have to point in the direction of the magnetic field, which we determined was into the page. So imagine grabbing this loop with your right hand. You're going to curl your four fingers into the page. So it might look something like that. Your thumb would naturally be pointing in this direction right here. Keep in mind that in this picture, this is the back of the fingers, not the top of the fingers. So you grab that loop of wire, your thumb points to the right naturally, and therefore the current is flowing to the right. So the correct answer for the direction of the current through this resistor is from right to left. And maybe a more simple way of saying that is to the left. So the final answer to part B would be to the left for the current that's flowing through the resistor R.